Good morning, it's almost 9 a.m. and we are gonna do a eight hour range test with the Model Y now that it's got almost 52,000 miles on it. See if we can set a new record for miles or if we've had a lot of degradation over the last year and a half since I did this test. Let's hit the road and I'll fill you in on the way. We're at 100% and it's thinking we have 291 miles, almost nine o'clock. Gonna wait till the tick over and then hit the road and we'll catch up there. It is 9.30, so we're a half hour into the trip. A uh, quick note on conditions. It's 61 degrees, but we have a pretty good headwind headed northeast, so we're fighting it. And I think, unfortunately, this afternoon, the wind is going to shift just about the time we turn around, but we might have a headwind coming home, too. So that's going to hurt us a little bit. The temperature is also considerably warmer than when we tested this last time with the Model Y. And so far I haven't had to have climate on because it's just perfectly temperate. So those are a couple things working for us in our favor, which will hopefully balance things out. Other variables is my tires are a little low. I thought that was by, because of the cold and they'd warm up. They aren't really warming up much. At Dow's, Iowa, I will hop out and pump those up to 42 PSI, which is the recommended uh, pressure for the car. The speed of the test is 75 miles an hour. I originally set this test up before I had seen any of the Kyle Connor or Tom Malogny 70 mile an hour range tests. And so my standard has been 75 and then their standard is 70. I wish it was the same, but I wanna compare my apples to apples. The thing they do is a loop style test, which makes perfect sense, they go 100% down to zero. What I'm trying to do with this test is to mimic a road trip. You get the family in the car and you head one direction for eight hours. Now I am gonna turn around, but if I don't make it back to my home point, it's not the end of the world. It's how far can you go in that day of travel? And so far we've gone 40 miles at 934 with an average energy consumption of 346 which is fairly high but again i think that's that's the wind talking to us so let's talk strategy a little bit in the past couple times when i've done this test i've tried a few different things what i've realized it's obvious now in hindsight is that it doesn't necessarily matter which chargers you stop at as long as they're near the highway and you're getting good charge speed. So Dow's Iowa is a 150 kilowatt station. And in the past, I've done a test where I thought, okay, well, I'll go further into Iowa and go to the West Des Moines supercharger. And when I did that, it was several blocks off the highway, lots of stoplights, and then you're still at 150 kilowatt supercharger. And I've also ended the test in the Twin Cities where the last hour or so I'm in much slower traffic. So that's not really getting the good interstate type of test that I'm trying to show. So luckily in the last year, year and a half, there have been a couple new 250 kilowatt stations that have opened in Iowa near Des Moines. And those stations are also right off the highway. So what I'm gonna do is head a little further into Iowa, use those faster chargers that are right off the highway. I will probably still have to stop at Dow's, but it can be a shorter trip. And then I'll have quick charging down there and be able to do a little more hopscotch, shorter charging sessions, which should keep me on the road for a longer period of time within this eight hours. So the town I'm headed for is Grinnell, Iowa, or Grinnell, Iowa. Uh, it's a little bit east of Des Moines. So that's my target turnaround point. There's charging there, there's charging a little bit before there, and there's charging at Dow's and, and Albert Lee, which almost to Albert Lee now. So I'm feeling good because there's more infrastructure and I think I have a little bit better plan. I got such a good result my first time I did this with the Model S uh, because I used a better route planner to kind of plan out what percentage I needed to leave each charger with. And so I do have that on my phone and I'm going to kind of use that as a guide, but not necessarily a Bible. And the mileage to beat from my very first test with the Model Y is 493 miles. Hopefully with the new strategy, I can match or beat that, which would be a good sign for my battery health 
after 52,000 miles. So let's see how that plays out. I'm really hoping for a good result today, despite the wind. Thank you for visiting Minnesota. And we are just about to cross into Iowa. And in Iowa at 10.17 a.m. We've gone 93 miles, views 33 kilowatt hours at 348 watt hours per mile. And right now our energy graph is saying we've got 103 miles of range left. So now I'm going to navigate to Grinnell, Iowa and see what the car thinks we should do and compare that with a better route planner. So it's looking like it wants us to stop at Dow's for 20 minutes. We're gonna get to Dow's at 17%, say. Right now we're at 50%, so that makes sense to stop there. And then since we're only navigating to Grinnell, it's saying that's our only stop. So I will compare that with the better route planner. So it'll be interesting to see what we arrive to Dow's with. I'm gonna cancel the navigation so we don't start pre-eating until we're about 20 miles away. I don't want it to start using up juice now. It's not, but I'm just gonna try to manually manage that. It's down to 55 degrees Fahrenheit here in Iowa, which is always weird when you go south and it gets colder. But we'll see, I think the car might be correct here. I think it might be 17% by the time we get to Dallas, just because the wind is pretty significant. And we're occasionally getting rain here too. It doesn't seem like it's gonna get heavy enough to make a big difference though. Two miles away from the supercharger, 1.7 miles. We were preconditioning for about 10 or 15 minutes, um, and then it stopped, and now it's starting again as we're getting close. So uh, we should hit the exit here in just a second. I've had the good fortune of a semi going 75, or just a hair over, and staying right in front of me. I've been able to get a good wind barrier for the last several miles, which is good. Looks like we're gonna get here with 20%. And then I think we need to get to something like 63, according to Better Route Planner, to get to Grinnell. Hopefully that's fast. And remember, it's all about maximizing these minutes when you're not on the highway. So going through the parking lot briskly, we'll jump out and get plugged in, and then we will look at the stats. Here we are at the Dow's Junction. So it's saying 20 minutes to continue the trip. Our last trip was 153 miles and 345 watt hours per mile. We used about three quarters of our battery and that took us two hours and 10 minutes, which I think is pretty standard to what we've gotten before. So according to a better route planner, it's saying we need to get to 63% and that will get us to Grinnell with 10% extra. Uh, but we're getting 137 kilowatts, so that's good, 136. We're already up to 25%. I'm gonna hit the restroom and grab some lunch while I'm here. All right, just getting back out to the car. I think we got a couple more minutes left. And it's saying we're gonna to get to Grinnell with 21%, which is way more than we need. I'm gonna take a different route and try to maximize interstate and get more miles. So we'll see what happens. For now, time to unplug. Head out. Leaving Dallas, trying to get back on the highway as quickly as possible, safely, following the rules of the road. We got up to 71%. The car is saying we'll get to Grinnell with 22%, but like I said, we're gonna go a little bit different way so we can just stay on the interstates. And hopefully this gives us enough juice to roll efficiently and get there still with a low state of charge. And from there, we'll make a plan of whether we go further east or if we are going to start heading back. So we'll see what time it is by then. But we're back on the highway up to 75 miles an hour. Still got the rain. I didn't have a chance to do the tires. The car charged faster than I was expecting, so that's good. But I don't know that the penalty we're getting from being at 38 PSI instead of 42 is big enough that it's going to 
really change our mileage. So I didn't want to take extra time to do that, but we'll do it in Grinnell. It's 11.29 and we've got 54 degrees out. I think the wind has calmed down a little bit. Check the windy app. Nope. Maybe right in our area, but still kind of hitting us. But hopefully that'll level out throughout the day, but I don't have high hopes. So we'll see you when we get to just north of Des Moines, unless something interesting happens. We are exiting on I-80 East toward Davenport. And right now it is saying that we will get to Grinnell at 16%. So my strategy is going to be to pass Grinnell, and let's say we get there with 16%. I'll drive another 8% east or so. We'll see where the exits are. And then turn around, come back west. So we get to, to Grinnell with like 1% or around there. And that's a 250 kilowatt supercharger, the only one on this route. So that's gonna be the plan. I'm not quite sure how high I'll charge up. It would be great if I could get from there to Albert Lee. That would keep me on the road longer, but it might be more efficient to go back to Dow's and pick up a little charge there. I just don't want to end the time sitting in a supercharger. So I want to maximize drive time, but I also don't want to run out between chargers. So that will be part of the calculation when we get to Grinnell. It's almost 12.30. So on the original test, my turnaround was 1 p.m in the gas cars but obviously i didn't have to stop for charging in those so i think i've got a solid plan but we'll see we'll really be sure until we make our last charge stop luckily even the turnaround here in the northern des moines that kind of snarl of interstates wasn't too bad and i'm already back up almost to speed if this person would get out of the passing lane so we're doing pretty well we'll see you in Grinnell or as we just pass it all right just passing over the North Stump River as we're almost to one o'clock and that was our turnaround time for the gas vehicles and so if we look at trips We've gone 266 miles at one o'clock. I uh, used 88 kilowatt hours, so a little bit over a full battery. Had an average of 332 watt hours per mile. This round, I think because we're going east now, we're getting a little bit of push from that wind, but obviously we're gonna have to fight that on the way back. Right now it's saying we will get to Grinnell with 15%. We're gonna go a little bit past there and I'll be using my energy graph to see how many miles I actually have based on how I'm driving to make sure I turn around at the right point. But right now I'm feeling pretty good. We still need to make up some time. I'd love to get over 500 miles on this test, but it's gonna be tricky. But the V3 supercharger should help, and hopefully we can max out that uh, the charge speed on that. I'm also gonna pump up the tires a little bit, and hopefully that gives us a little help uh, fighting the wind headed north and west. We'll check the Windy app also before we leave, so we'll get a good sense of what we're gonna be dealing with. But at the top of the hill is this turn off to Grinnell. And like I said, with 14%, we're gonna bypass this and come back. This is a very hilly part of Iowa, which I didn't realize. I'm not sure if I've actually been to this part of Iowa before. And we'll make it recalculate here. So I can see the superchargers over there. They're right off the highway, which is good. So we'll follow the directions. It's gonna say, it's saying going 8.3 miles and make a U-turn or you know exit off the highway, get back on, heading westbound. And then it's saying we'll get to Grinnell with 5%. So that's about perfect. That's enough buffer to feel comfortable, but using a little bit more of the battery, getting more of these miles on, and hopefully maximizing that 250 kilowatt charging speed. So we'll see you at the turnaround in 7.2 miles and hope we're on track. Okay, we are just about to our turnaround point. We are at 10%, saying we'll get to the supercharger with 6% now. So we'll see how that goes after I decelerate and then accelerate back onto the highway. Uh, 282 miles is where we're turning around. And our trip graph says we have 23 miles. 
based on how we've been driving. There's no traffic here, so this is a pretty good quick turnaround there. And right back up to 75. You can see the wind turbines are working here as the wind is coming northeast. So again, we'll check that when we get to the supercharger, how it's gonna be for the rest of the way home, and that'll help guide our decisions on how to maximize charging on the second run, because this is where we make or break the test. Car showing 20 miles of range on the consumption graph, and we've got seven miles to go. So should be plenty, saying we'll get there with 5%. Feeling pretty good about this, so we'll see you when we get there. Okay, that was dicey. There's some road construction, and I didn't think we'd actually have an exit, so we did. That's fantastic, but it was, I was starting to do some pretty complex math in my head about how we could get to the next one and make it back now. But the superchargers are right here off the interstate and there's a subway and a come and go. No oh, heck of a curb getting in here. Got another friendly Model Y here. Let's get plugged in. <laughs> Lots of bird crap on this handle. That's not awesome. We're plugged in and charging. 98 kilowatts right now. Let's see if that ramps up. That last run was 193 miles and took about two hours. 291 for the trip so far. Ramping up at 101. Come on, let's keep going. And I'm going to navigate, navigate to the Albert Lee Minnesota Supercharger. All right, so it's saying we'll stay here 50 minutes if we want to go right there. I don't think we want to do that. So right now we're ramped up to 230 kilowatts, 231. I'm going to run in, use the restroom, pump up the tires. Once we drop below 150, we'll just go to Dow's and touch up there. But we don't want to stay here for 50 whole minutes or we'll just be further behind. So I was thinking this would be faster, but I think a quick stop in Dow's is going to be more efficient. 126, time to uh, use the restroom, pump the tires up. So let's get to it and not waste any minutes. So we'll get to Albert Lee with minus 24. We're getting 85 kilowatts, which isn't great, but we're at 66%. I just don't know how fast Dow's is going to taper, and that's going to be the real question. Maybe I'll let it get to 70%, so we'll be here about 20 minutes. I don't know. I'm I'm struggling here. I just don't know how fast Dow's is going to be. We're down to 80 kilowatts. Just for meme's sake, let's go to 69%. All right, 69%. We'll unplug at 144. 77 kilowatts, and that's running down, so... This handle is gross. It's under a tree, so just covered in bird crap. Let's hit the road. Oh, there's a stoplight. Let's keep the apple. Right, I guess we gotta go turn around where we turned around before, then head to Dow's. So that's gonna, I mean, it shouldn't really change anything other than one extra turnaround. Stoplights are killing me here. Navigate to Dow's, Iowa. Right, it's saying we'll get there with 11%, which is not a lot. So we're gonna play it by ear. We might have to slow it down and that's gonna hurt our time, but we'll see how bad the rain and wind is. Oof, it's saying we'll get there with 4%. So that will be interesting. Concerned about that, but we want to make the most out of the battery, so let's see how this works. Okay, we're almost back to our turnaround point again. Saying we'll get to Dow's at 4% if we stay below 70 miles an hour. We're not going to do that. We're going to stay at 75, and I wonder if it'll just have a stop at Altoona for a couple of minutes, which isn't the end of the world, but it's one more time getting off the highway and back on it. So not crazy about that, but if we have to do it, we have to do it. I'd rather 
stay up at the speed we're supposed to be going because that's what the test is. We'll see, we'll keep an eye on our energy graph and all that stuff, see how the wind is. I forgot to check the wind when we were stopped there. I'm afraid having that entrance ramp closed is really gonna throw a wrench in the works, but we'll do the best we can. No test in the real world is perfect. I know it's not translating on the camera here, but especially when we pass semis, the rain isn't really big, but it's intense and misty. And when we pass semis, it's almost white out. The camera sees right through it, so it's not gonna come across on the video, but we're still seeing 3% arrival at Dow's, but I'm supposed to stay under 70. So we'll check in on Altoona and see how that's going, but trying to pack the miles on it. All right, so I'm chickening out. The car was saying we were gonna get to Dallas with 2% and it didn't seem to be improving at all. I thought, well, I've never been to the Altoona Supercharger, so I can knock that one off the list. And if we just stay there for like five minutes, it should be enough to get us to Dow's comfortably. The rain has intensified and I just wanna be sure I can make it. So hopefully it just makes the Dow's stop a little shorter. Unfortunately, that means we are gonna hit extra stoplights and downtime, but I also don't want to have to go 60, you know, in the rain trying to get to Dow's. So playing it a little safe here. Uh, so our exit in Altoona is coming up. Try to make that a very, very, very quick stop. We are preconditioning, which I'm not crazy about, but again, if it gives us a little more juice while we're here, then that's good. Pretty sure this is a newer station than Dow's. I don't know if it'll be any better. It's still version two. Maybe while I'm stopped here, I'll check and see if we can make it all the way to Albert Lee if we just stay a little longer. And then skip the Dow's stop. Feels inefficient because we're so far away, but if we can avoid a stop, it'll be worth it. This Altoona stop is right off the highway too. And luckily the entrance ramp is working, so we won't have to backtrack. Looks like we're in the parking lot of a Holiday Inn Express. Come and go. Ooh, only six units. All right, think fast. We were preconditioning, so we're ramping up here. 120, 129 kilowatts, 130, 131, 135, 137. So that's good. It's a good charge rate. Uh, it's saying 10 minutes to continue. I'm going to play around with the and see if switching it to Albert Lee changes things drastically. Navigate to Albert Lee, Minnesota. We're up to 144 kilowatts there, so that was good. If we stay here 30 minutes, we can get all the way to Albert Lee. We don't want to do that. Now let's switch this to navigate to Dow's Iowa Supercharger. So it's saying now we'd get there with 1%, and it's saying 10 minutes, but I bet we won't need that. But we're getting good speed at 130 kilowatts still. So I'm gonna hang out for here for a few minutes, and then we'll take off. Maybe when it says we'll get to Dow's with 10%, I should be able to deal with that five minutes more but we're gonna get to Dow's with 10% which is plenty so I'm gonna unplug here and get moving this is a time where we need to make critical decisions we need to do a little backtracking here but not bad we get the screen light let's get the screen light so this is Casey general store on that side of the highway come and go on that side um, now it's saying we'll get to Dallas with 12%, so that's good. That was a good short stop. Had time for a quick phone call and then back on the road. At that stop, we were at 351 miles. So we're going to get up to speed, hopefully get around Des Moines relatively quickly. Start heading north. We've been heading north now for a little while, and you can see on the energy graph, Reconditioning going to Altoona, and then now as we've kind of got stuck in a traffic snarl, and then as we're consistently heading north now, what it's saying on our trip, we'll get to Dallas with about 9% if all things go equal. On the windy app, it looks like the wind did shift, so now it's coming at us again, but it's only about between 5 and 10 miles an hour, so not too bad, but we're still, you know, fighting that and the rain. Uh, this Dow's stop is going to make or break our 
time. We should arrive in Dallas just before 4 p.m. at about 430 miles. So the amount we can get there and get on the road, that'll determine how close to 500 miles we can get. So that's going to be our linchpin stop. Hopefully it's a quick one. We're about 12 miles away from Dow's at about 15 miles and started preconditioning. Right now it's saying we want to be at Dow's for 20 minutes to make it to Albert Lee with 20%. So we're definitely not going to do that. So I'm thinking about a 15 minute stop will give us plenty to get to Albert Lee. If I can cut that shorter, I will. But it's saying we'll get to Albert Lee at 5.10, so 10 minutes after the test is done. So I'm going to try to cut that charge stop shorter, get our max mileage out of it. If we have the opportunity, I'd love to be able to go past Albert Lee and then come back and hit the charger, kind of like we did with Grinnell. But that'll be up in the air depending on you know how much we have and, and how feasible it is what the weather's like up in Minnesota. We're down to 47 degrees here, it's still raining. So we're gonna do the best we can, but I'm cautiously optimistic we can get a good result. Do the bare minimum stop I can do at Dow's with enough confidence that we'll actually get to Albert Lee, one or two percent to spare. All right, exiting in Dow's, 3.49 p.m. Again, it's all about maximizing this downtime speed. Stop, go. And people pulled out in front of me to go slow. Love that. Just love it. Come on. 350, we're at 6%. 351. Burning minutes here, people. Getting your butts in gear. I'll get a picture when I get back in. All right, plugged in. It's saying starting chairs there. We heard the click. We're ramping up. It's saying 25 minutes to continue trip. Like I said, we're not going to do that. Last trip was 81 miles. Average energy usage was 373 watt hours per mile. So not very efficient. We've gone through uh, 431 miles. We're up over 100 kilowatts. That's good. Hopefully it goes up even higher. I'm going to run in, use the restroom, grab a snack, and be out here so we can go the second it's ready. We're almost at 4 o'clock. It's saying... Minus 15 to get to Albert Lee, but we are cruising at 143 kilowatts, so that's pretty good. Just not as fast as I'd like. Well, I gotta say I'm pretty impressed. It just dropped under 140 kilowatts at 40%. So it was for a 150 kilowatt supercharger, it was holding 143 for quite a long time. I was hoping to get out of here at 405. It's now saying we'll get to Albert Lee with 0%. Obviously, we want a little bit of buffer, but I think it's baking one in. I'm thinking probably 45%, maybe, is when it'll be a good time to take off. I definitely want to leave before 4.10 to make sure I can get the miles I want to get in. If we have to slow down on the way to Albert Lee, we could do that. I'd really rather not. If I can get close to my original test, then I'll be feeling pretty good about my battery health and... If it's degraded, I'm not really concerned because in real world driving, that means it hasn't really slowed us down. Traffic is more of a factor. So really hoping to get close to that. Might give it a couple more minutes just to get a little buffer, but I want to get out of here pretty fast. All right, just hit 50%, 51%, 8% buffer to get to Albert Lee. I'm gonna unplug now and we'll hit the road. Let's go, go, go. Leaving Dow's at 408, saying we'll get, now it's saying we'll get there with 12%. So probably could have left a few minutes earlier, but it's good to have a little breathing room and that'll probably come down once we hit full speed. So this is the telltale section. Settling in at 75 miles an hour. Let's see how many, saying 69 miles, which would put us close to the mark, but it's also saying 509. Yeah, so we'll see. We may have stayed too long at Dow's. It's it's even gone up now and said we're going to get there with 13%. So hopefully we'll do all right. We'll check back in at the border. Okay, we are at 445. 15 minutes left to go. We've got 25% battery. We have yet to hit the border, but let's check in on trips. And we've gone 476 miles. 
Let's hope we can pack on a few more before five. Seeing we'll get to Albert Lee at 5.08 with 11%. So we did leave some time on the table in Dow's. We probably should have stayed a little bit longer in Grinnell, Skip, Altoona. But this is real world. Not the greatest of weather today, but I'm feeling pretty good with where we'll get. 14 minutes left to go. And we are back in Minnesota. Minnesota welcomes you. More rain. And we are at 4.57 p.m. The number to beat is 493 miles. That was our first test in the Model Y. And I know we had some slowdowns at the end of that test too. So it's gonna be pretty apples to apples. We could have optimized that trip a little better and we could have in hindsight now optimized this trip a little bit better. But they're both real world tests. So it'll be interesting to see where we land. I'm intentionally not looking, even though I really, really want to. Uh, we're at 15% and about 10 minutes away from Albert Lee. So 4.58, and obviously we left at nine this morning. So 5 p.m. is eight hours. So we're working nine to five. What a way to make a living. For the most part, traffic has been pretty good this round. Other than the construction work around we had to do, and then a little bit of a snarl north of Des Moines, but we had that in the other trips as well. 4.59, once that tips over, we'll take a look at our trip meter and see what that says. It's one of those times when minutes take forever. 5 p.m., and we went 495 miles. So we beat our original eight hour test by two miles. So pretty good, I am happy with that. I would have loved to have gotten over 500 and again, like that first test, I think we probably could have done it had I been a little smarter. Had I brought this trip graph up, it would have been using real data from the last 30 miles of driving. And so I would have left Dow's a little bit earlier, but that's live and learn. And maybe if I do this test when I hit 100,000 miles, I'll remember to do that. So in this series of tests for me, this is a new record in an EV, even though it's only a couple miles, having that faster infrastructure has helped. And then had I optimized a little bit different, that would have helped as well. But none of the stops felt like they were too long. It was usually use the restroom and then do one other thing. Fill up the tires at one point, check social media on another one, get lunch at the first stop. And none of them really held me up. I felt like I was able to move pretty efficiently. So we'll pull off here in a minute to Albert Lee. I'll charge up and get back home. I'm pretty happy with this result. It's a record for me at 495 miles. I think we could could crush it if we optimized a little bit more. Maybe if I had somebody with me that could help check my math and my, my planning as we go, and it wouldn't just all be in my tangled noggin. One other thing I wanted to talk about, and I forgot to mention this in Albert Lee, was that part of the reason I wanted to do this test was to see how the battery was doing. And, you know, there's there's different plugins you can do, different apps you can check, and calculations and things. But what this test tells me is that in the real world, how I'm using the car, when it was new, I got 493 miles doing this eight hour drive. Now that it's got 52,000 miles on it, I got 495 miles. So if there's been some level of battery degradation in that 52,000 miles, it hasn't really changed how the car drives in road trip scenarios. Is it maybe less efficient? Possibly, but you know, that end result number is really the only thing that matters in the real world to people who aren't going to be checking every percentage and every factor. The important factor is can this car still do what it did when it was new? That is a definite yes. And for all practical purposes, that's all that matters. To me, of course, everybody's got their pet stats and all that stuff. When we look back at the cost of the gas Corolla or the hybrid Prius, it looks like the Model Y cost is way out of line, but we have to remember those were 2019 prices. When we adjust for the current average gas price in Iowa of $3.43 a gallon, things tighten back up. Today, the cost per mile for the Corolla would be $0.10 cents and $0.09 cents for the Prius. Model Y is still higher at $0.11, cents, 
with current supercharger prices. So if you're the kind of person who drives five to 800 miles per day, then you're better off getting a really efficient hybrid. But the occasional road trip being the same or slightly more expensive than gas isn't the end of the story when you remember that most charging is at home and considerably cheaper for daily driving. In our last month, we've spent $59 for all of our charging, most of which was at home. That's just slightly more than what it costs to supercharge on this single trip, and slightly more than what you would pay for current gas prices for the Corolla or the Prius. And again, that's over the course of an entire month. So for daily driving and charging, you can save quite a bit. So I hope this helps. Hope that makes sense. If not, please ask any questions in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry the scenery was so rainy, but thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Have a great day and happy road tripping.